Hello and welcome to Cisco Router Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington based provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're configuring a site to site VPN between a pair of Cisco routers. It's based on Chapter 12 in my book, The Accidental Administrator Cisco Router Step by Step Configuration Guide. It's available in both paperback and Kindle editions from Amazon and through other channels. If you'd like to pick up a copy, I'd love it, but please don't feel obligated. You can certainly follow along without the book. The video is based on Cisco iOS version 12.4. The image that we're using uh, on a pair of 871 routers is the Advanced IP Services feature set. And the reason we're doing that is because you have to have IPsec in order to set up a VPN tunnel, as we'll go over again in just a moment. Now, what is a site-to-site -site VPN? Oftentimes, if we think about a VPN, we think about a remote access VPN, which would be used by uh, traveling workers, say, logging in, they're on the road, maybe they're in Milwaukee, and your home office is in Minneapolis, and so they would uh, log in to the uh, VPN from the remote office in Milwaukee, connecting to the main office in Minneapolis. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is a site-to-site -site VPN. So suppose you have an office in Seattle and another one in Kansas City. And traditionally, what you would have done in the past is you would have leased some kind of a, a service, maybe a T1 line running at 1.5 megabits per second and costing you a lot of money between the two cities. Well, with the advent of the public Internet, we're able to take advantage of the public Internet infrastructure and connect through the cloud using an encrypted tunnel. And that's the key with a VPN is it applies encryption to the tunnel, thus making a communication private. And it costs a whole lot less than leasing a line and, frankly, probably get a lot more bandwidth. I hope you get a lot more bandwidth than 1.5 megabits per second. This is the diagram that we're going to be using for the demonstration, and you can download a copy of this diagram along with all of the others from the book, the Accidental Administrator Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide from the book's website. It's free. You don't even have to register. You can just go there, and there's a link where you can download it in PDF format. And the URL is www.soundtraining.net slash cisco-router-book, and that's where you can download this diagram along with others. And I'm going to be working doing the demonstration on computer computer 01, um, and I've already got router 2 configured, so really it's just a matter of me sitting down and configuring router 1, and if I do everything right, we should be able to, to have communication between the two computers. Prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need the following. Unrestricted privilege mode access to a pair of Cisco routers. Obviously, you can't have a VPN unless you have a pair of routers. And the equipment software requirements, two Cisco routers. I use Cisco model 871s. You can use pretty much any router in the Cisco line, except you're not going to be able to do this with the consumer grade, the Linksys Cisco routers. That won't work. This is for commercial grade routers. You'll also need a Cisco iOS software version that supports IPsec. As I mentioned, I'm using a pair of 871s that have the advanced IP services feature set. But the main thing is just to make sure that your your iOS version supports IPsec. You'll need a couple of computers, a console cable, and terminal emulation software, of course, if you're working with routers. The one that I'm using is Putty. Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. No guarantees whatsoever. Please do not attempt these procedures on a production router without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. You do have one, don't you? The procedures shown in this video will modify your router's existing configuration, so ensure you've fully backed up your router's config and software images before commencing these procedures. And performing these procedures may open your router to the public internet and subject your network to attack, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. And that's just a generally good practice whether you're watching this video or anything else. Here's a summary of the steps. You know, if you look at the configuration steps for setting up a VPN in a lot of the documentation out there, it looks pretty intimidating, and I understand that. But the reality is that there's four steps. Phase one is the key exchange. This is ISACAMP, Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol. This is the handshake where the two routers agree on how they're going to communicate. Then phase two is setting up the IPsec tunnel. Then we apply the crypto map to the outside interface. That's where we identify our peers and, and the tunnel groups and so on. And then we create an access control list to identify the traffic flows. The access control lists are always inside to inside. So that is my LAN 
to the other router's LAN. Inside to inside for the access control list, outside to outside for the peers. All right, let's go ahead and do the demo, and we'll start a continuous ping to computer two. Now, remember, I'm on computer one and router one, and so our partner is router two and computer two. So we're going to start a continuous ping to computer two, which is at 192.168.102.2, and we'll put a minus T switch on it to make it a continuous ping, and you'll see there we're getting a destination host unreachable, or you might get a no reply message, but uh, something saying that it's not successful. We'll leave that on in the background, and then we'll switch over to PuTTY so we can start the configuration on the router. And again, I'm going to leave the PowerShell window open behind PuTTY so that you'll be able to see the ping when it's successful when we finish the configuration. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go into Global Configuration Mode, Config T, and then we're going to invoke Cryptographic Services with the command Crypto. And since we're doing phase one, that's ISAKEMP, I-S-A-K-M-P, Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol. Policy, this is a grouping of our phase one configuration parameters, and we just have to identify it, so we'll call it policy 10. And now, what is the hash algorithm that we're going to use? We're going to use secure hash algorithm, so we'll type hash. SHA. We could use MD5, but SHA is a little more robust, and that's pretty much what everybody's using now. And now, how are we going to authenticate? Well, we'll use a pre-shared key, so let's type authentication, pre-share. And now we need to identify our key itself, so we'll type crypto, isakemp, key is VPN key. And this is just a text string, but it has to match on both ends of the connection. Then address, we're going to identify our peer at the other end of the connection, 192.168.1.12. And now we're done with the phase one portion of the configuration. Let's move on to phase two, and that's setting up the encrypted tunnel. So once the handshake is successful, then it moves on to phase two, which is creating the encrypted tunnel. So this is the IPsec portion. So here we go with IPsec. Once again, using the crypto command to invoke cryptographic services. Now we're going to say crypto IPsec transform set. We have to give it a name. We'll call it VPN set. Again, you could call it Billy Bob. Doesn't matter as long as you are consistent with this. And we'll say ESP-AES. That is the encapsulating security payload and AES is the Advanced Encryption Standard. You could use uh, triple DES, but most people have moved to AES. Now it's considered a little more robust and a little faster too. So we'll do AES, and then ESP SHA, because we're going to identify our hashing algorithm here with the hashing message authentication code. And that sets up our transform set. Again, think of the transform set as being to IPsec what the ISACAMP policy is to ISACAMP. Now let's uh, set up our crypto maps. We'll type exit and do crypto map VPN set 10 IPsec ISACAMP. And you'll notice that it throws off an error. It's just saying, hey, you're not done with the configuration yet. Yeah, I know that. We'll do that in a moment. We'll do the, the uh, access control list and we'll identify our peer in just a moment. So we've got that done. Now let's go ahead and tell it what transform set to use. We'll say set, transform set. Oh, you have to type right. It's supposed to know what I meant, but it doesn't quite work that way. So set, transform set to VPN set. Now match address 100. This is simply saying to, to match the addresses identified in the access list 100, which I haven't configured yet. I'm going to do that in a moment, and that will identify the inside-to-inside -inside traffic flow, as you'll see as we go through it. Now we've got to set our peer, so set peer. This is, again, the other router's outside interface, 192.168.1.12. You know, if you think about it, it makes sense because it wouldn't know about the other router's inside interface. It would only know about the other router's outside interface. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And now we need to apply the crypto map to an interface. So what interface do you suppose we would work with? Well, it's going to be the outside because, again, that's where the tunnel exists between the two outside interfaces. So interface F4. And we'll apply the crypto map with crypto map VPN set. 
So that applies the crypto map to the interface. We're still not done. We have to configure an access control list and set the default route, and then we'll be done. So let's go ahead and set the access list. So access list 100, permit IP traffic to flow from our inside network to the other router's inside network. So remember, access lists are inside to inside. So here we go with 192.168.101.0 with a 24-bit mask using the wildcard bits or the inverse subnet mask of 0.0.0.255. If that is foreign to you, if you're not familiar with it, that's how we do access lists on a router. And really all it's saying is that the, the first 24 bits of the address, the 192.168.101, are what we want to match. Um, and so the 0.0.0, .0 represents 24 zeros. The 255 represents eight ones at the end. And so it's just the opposite of doing it uh, with a traditional mask. Now the other router's inside interface or inside network, 192.168.102.0. And again, that goofy looking uh, inverse mask of 0.0.0.255 will hit enter and apply it. And we're still not done. We have one more step to go, and that is to create our default route. Let me do the command do show IP route, and you can see that the gateway of last resort has not been set. In other words, that is what Cisco calls a, a default route. So we need to set that, and we'll do that with the IP route command 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 for the address and 0.0.0.0 for the mask. And what this is saying is when you receive a packet that you don't know what else to do with, then send it to the address that you specify in the gateway of last resort. And we're going to set 192.168.1.1 for that gateway. Honestly, you don't use it in the configuration. So as far as I can tell, any address will work. But we'll go ahead and, and make it the actual one. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And now in just a moment, you should see the ping coming back from router uh, from computer 2. And look at that. There it is. It is coming back. Now, you may see a little bit of latency initially when it's set up, but ultimately it should be a pretty consistent ping. Here's a checklist of troubleshooting items for VPN connections. And, you know, it's a lot of the stuff that you'd expect. Check all your cables and connectors. Verify your IP addresses. So just audit your configurations, including router outside and inside interfaces, plus the addresses on each of the computers, especially if you're using dynamically assigned addresses. Sometimes they change for whatever reason. Check your default gateways. Ensure that only one network connection is enabled on each PC so that you don't run the risk of the packets going out a uh, different uh, interface interface in which you expect. Confirm that the access control list is configured to allow traffic to flow from the local inside network to the remote inside network. Remember, it's inside to inside. Verify that each router's peer is configured as the remote router's outside interface. Remember, peers are outside to outside. Confirm that the same keys and protocols are in use on each end of the connection. The two router configurations should mirror each other, except, obviously, for your IP addresses. So just audit them and make sure that you're using AES on both ends or MD5 or triple DS or whatever it is that, that you're using the same the same hashing algorithms and, and encryption uh, technologies on both sides. And confirm that the ISAKIMP Security Association is there. Uh, you can use the command show crypto ISAKIMP SA to check that. If it doesn't, then uh, if it's not there, then your IPsec connection cannot be made either. Let me go back into PuTTY and we'll show you that command. So here's the command. We'll do do show crypto isakemp sa and there you can see it's showing from the destination of 192.168.1.12 or to the destination 192.168.1.12 from the source at 192.168.1.11 so there's a handshake in place and if that's not there if you don't see that then you're not going to have any other connection no no other aspect of the vpn will work if you'd like more information, you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. You can follow us on Google+. Plus. Uh, also like us on Facebook. Please like us on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter as well at soundtraining.net slash Twitter. If you want more videos, we've got a lot of them, and I try to add at least one a week. Sometimes I'll get more. Occasionally I'll miss a week, but usually I try to get at least one a week on. And that's on our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like a copy of the companion book for the video, 
Um, it's available at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore, both Kindle and paperback editions. Well, I hope it's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. See you next time.